Thank you. All right. Up until yesterday, that song was called Slow Fingers, but now it's called Traveling Monk. Um, <laughs> we're gonna play a song now called That Ain't Kava. Anybody here ever hear of Kava? You know what Kava is? All right, so I did not. We were booked to play a, a venue in Hollywood, Florida. And um, yeah, we were, we were booked to play a place called the, the Twisted Root Kava Bar. And I was very naive. I did not hear about Kava before. I thought we were about to have a sparkling white wine experience. But turns out that these hippies grind up this pepper root and they say it's uh, sort of a hybrid between booze and weed. That's how it's marketed. Yeah. It's neither of those things, but it does make your tongue numb as shit. So I thought I was having an allergic reaction. I guess that's normal. So we show up at this bar, and I'm looking at the doorway, and I see this dude show up, and I'm like, it's going to be a good night, because I know the man. He's my Skype guitar student. His name is Wildman. That's how it shows up on Skype, so it's very official. And I actually don't know his actual name, just Wild Man. I'm like, this is going to be good. Because he's an avant-garde guitarist, and whenever he takes like a Skype lesson with me, the first 45 minutes, it's like, check this out. And he just leans down, and he starts like making noise. And I can't get his attention back, no matter what I do. <laughs> so it's very avant-garde for me, too. And I was just like, this is going to be good, because this fucker is out of his mind. He talks to me exclusively in Hebrew. I speak Hebrew. He does not. So he's just speaking in tongues. Uh, it's very bizarre. So I'm sitting with Wild Man, and I'm like, hey, Wild Man, do you want some kava? And he goes, I don't drink anything that alters my consciousness. And I'm like, not even coffee? And he goes, no. I'm like, all right, that was a good conversation. That's enough for me. So I just get up and leave. And I go to this back room, just like this, where my guitar is, and I start tuning. And then I look and I see that Wild Man is, is in the back room with me where he's definitely not supposed to be. And he has his face to the wall and he's sort of like waving back and forth. And I know that he's like oddly religious, so I'm like, I don't know, is that like the direction of Mecca? Is that guy praying? I have no clue what's going on. I'm not gonna bother him. So I just go back on stage with my guitar and uh, I'm about to start the show. And I see Wild Man coming out of this back room and he sits down at the front table with two cups and uh, then I see the manager running back from that back room and he's going to the bartender and they're both like whispering. And then they get the owner and everybody's whispering. And they make a plan. And the three of them run and grab Wild Man by the shirt and start dragging him out of the venue. And he's like, I didn't know you're not supposed to do this here. And they go, you knew. And I'm like, what the fuck? Is this like a freedom of religion thing? I don't know what's going on. And they just toss him out of the venue. And he goes like, Danny, wild man. And he's gone. And I'm very confused. And the owner comes up to me right before we start playing. And he goes, you guys have some weird fucking fans. <laughs> and I say, sir, whatever do you mean? And he points at his drink and he says, that ain't kava. And I'm like, what is it? And he goes, that man went in the green room pissed in a cup, sat in front of you, and drank his own piss. And I say, nah. And he says, uh-huh. So I tell this whole story to Everett, and he says, nah. And I say, uh-huh. And we're very confused for the rest of the evening, because he looked crazy, but not that kind of crazy that drinks your own piss crazy, you know? So we don't know what to make of it. So we go to sleep at the owner's place, big house, pool, and we're sitting poolside the next morning, just still scratching our heads like, what the fuck was that? And then it comes to me. I have wild man's Skype number. So I call him up. I'm like, I gotta find out what's going on. And John hops in the middle of it. He's like, don't call him. I'm like, why? He's like, because the story is so good right now. Now I'm like, fuck that. The truth is out there. I'm wah, 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 wah. I gotta find out what's going on. So I call Wild Man, and he picks up, and he goes, hello. And I'm like, Wild Man? 
He goes, I got kicked out last night. I noticed. What happened? And he goes, did you ever hear of urinotherapy? And I say, no, sir. And he says, I drink my own piss. And I say, why? And he goes, everybody does. And I'm like, I don't think so. And he says, what about in your mother's uterus? You drank her piss. And I said, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think it works like that. And he says, did you ever hear about Christopher Reeve? And I'm like, Superman? And he goes, he would have walked if he drank his own piss. I'm like, what? And he's like, there are seven stem cells in every cup of piss. I'm like, how much piss are you drinking? And he says, all of it. I'm like, do you drink water? And he says, nope. So you recycle? Yes. Like, that's fucking crazy. And he's like, hold on. And he sends me a lecture by, like, Dr. Tinkle or something. It's an hour, like, YouTube talk. And I'm watching it as I'm talking to him, getting pretty convinced. I mean, the guy puts a good case on for piss drinking. And then he says this, the modern day pharaohs are plotting against us to keep us from the secrets of self-healing by concealing the benefits of piss drinking. So I'm here to let you guys that you should let your pee-pee go. And this song is That Ain't Kaba. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, we're gonna play one last song for you guys. Thank you. A big, big hand for all the other bands. You guys are awesome. Groove News, the band's up. Rocked it. How about that slap bass? Groove. That's a test. All right, so uh, this last one, well, by the way, we have merch right there, we have books, we have a book, brand new book called How to Stop Sucking, The Incomplete Guide. Um, you guys should check it out. We have CDs, vinyl, all that shit. And uh, we're, on, we're on tour all week, we're playing a bunch of Florida shows, so tell your friends. And uh, tomorrow we're, we're doing Columbus, or Columbia, what is it? Columbus, yeah. Masterclass in the morning, so if you wanna make the drive. Anyway, this last song is called Scissors. You guys want to hear another story? Yes! Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you the story of Scissors. So we play a lot of cruises, not uh, lame, well-funded cruises like Disney. We play for rock bands like Yes. We play the Yes Cruise. We're on the way there now. And uh, we play Monsters of Rock Cruise and On the Blue for the Moody Blues. So those events are... Uh, mainly for people who want to go out to see one last time before they die. Um, and uh, we love all you guys. We love your old geezers. We know you go. It's cool. And uh, the first time we went, we realized that that's an incredible experience if you're high. But if you don't have any weed, it fucking sucks. So we decided we vowed a vow to never ever go on another cruise without a shitload of weed after the first one. And the second one we got booked in, we brought a shitload of weed, like a lot of gummies. And I had a MacGyver-like plan to sneak them on the boat. What I wanted to do was open up this amp, and I did it, and just stuff it full of gummies. And the night before the cruise, I ran that by our sound guy in Stewart, Florida, who looked like he had a lot of like, experience smuggling drugs. I was like, so I stuffed this amp full of gummies for the cruise tomorrow, and he goes, that's a bad idea. And I'm like, why? And he goes, well, if they put it in an x-ray machine, it's not gonna look natural. I was like, what do you mean? It's like tubes and gummies, it just doesn't go. And I'm like, what would you do? And he's like, I'd put it in my suitcase. And I'm just like, this man is a fucking genius. So I just opened my amp back up and threw all the gummies in my suitcase. And funny enough, the next day we were the first band to play on the boat. And we had to carry all of our gear with our muscles onto the boat. And all of the luggage went with the porters onto the ship. And they did run my shit through an x-ray machine. And I thought, this fucking hippie just saved my life. Because I had to sign a lot of papers, pinky promising that I'm not bringing any weed on this boat, you know? So we finish our show. It's awesome. And we go to our rooms to change. Because I'm just dressed in my shorts, sunglasses, baseball cap, t-shirt, flip-flops, right? Just I have no other clothes. Everything's in the suitcase. So we get to the rooms, and all of the luggage is there except for one bag my fucking bag with all the shit so i start panicking i feel my heart it starts going boom, 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 boom. it's like maybe it's a mistake let's wait three hours go by i'm really panicking now i go to danny i'm like can you google what happens and he goes it's okay before the boat gets into the international waters before the sail starts and it's like Arr! we start fucking moving i'm like oh fuck right so I go to Everett's room, and I'm like, hey, man, what do I do? And he goes, like, I don't know. Man. And I'm just like, fuck, Justin won't help me. And it was all fucked, you know? So I'm like, okay. I start thinking, maybe I should just let them have my suitcase, just live without it, and just start a new wardrobe. And three hours later, I'm just like, fuck, I have to handle this head on like a fucking man, just... And then I grab Danny, I'm like, you're coming with me. And uh, we go to the customer service desk. And there's this little Filipino lady there. And I ask her, excuse me, ma'am, I can't find my suitcase. It was never delivered. And she goes, it was, that's very odd. Everything was delivered. And I go, I'm in cabin 5526. And she types it up. And she goes, is this your suitcase? 
and I see it behind the counter. And she pulls it towards me. Then I see a piece of gaff tape on it with Sharpie writing, and it says, call security. And I'm just like, fuck. It's on. She goes, hold on, sir. And these two security guards show up, and they put latex gloves on. And they're leaning on the, their knees, and they're unzipping my suitcase. Like, and they open it up. And they reach in, and they go, Sir, do you have any weapons? And I go, no. And they go, what's this? And they pull out a pair of scissors from my shaving kit. And then they go, oh, these are fine. Have a great cruise. And I'm just running through the boat like, scissors! Reach into the bag, grab a shitload of gummies, and go, oh, blah, 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 And proceed to have the best fucking cruise of my life. So this song is called Scissors.
Chair Marvin Grootmoos is next. We'll be right at the merch table, come talk to us.